In 1963, the first roller coaster in Florida opened, a wooden ride designed by a legend in the coaster industry. Called Starliner, it would operate at Miracle Strip Amusement Park from the day the park opened until it closed, before moving to another ill-fated park and becoming lost to history. The Starliner roller coaster is the same one which has been there from the beginning. Roller coasters built around 1963 were built so well that age has had little effect on it. We're at Cypress Gardens, Winter Haven, Florida. You're not gonna wanna miss this. It's the emotional phase ended long ago for most people and many are ready to move forward. hotel and motel accommodations within 20 miles of Fort Walton Beach. A new auditorium is under construction. Your choice in pleasurable activity can be pleased regardless of age. The late 1950s saw a flurry of motels pop up at Panama City Beach to offer accommodation for those coming to see its white beaches. Whether lounging at the pool or dipping in the gulf, Tourists to the area felt like they wanted more to do. Small roadside style attractions began opening up, most of which didn't stick around long. By 1960, the dub Miracle Strip was full of every kind of tourist attraction you could imagine. Anything to try and make as much money as possible. 1963 was a big year for tourism in Florida, with more and more attractions opening, aiming to lure visitors down to the Sunshine State. The state's first monorail opened at the Miami Seaquarium. Six Gun Territory aimed to recapture the Wild West. Daytona added a 125 foot tall observation tower. And at Panama City Beach, the state's first roller coaster. Jimmy Lark, a local builder who had moved into the tourism industry, had been on vacation and noticed some seaside resorts had a roller coaster that was hugely popular, bringing in tons of people, and more importantly, money. After the trip, he came back to Panama City Beach and decided he would build his own coaster as a standalone attraction. He secured the land and brought in three partners to help him bring his idea to reality. None of them had any idea what they were doing and had no experience, so brought in teams who did. First, the ride was to be constructed by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, who had been constructing roller coasters since the early 1900s. Secondly, Leading the design was PTC's president and coaster designer, John C. Allen. These were definitely people who had enough experience to get the job done. The coaster was estimated to cost at a minimum $100,000, close to a million dollars today with inflation. Rumor states that Allen drew the coaster freehand and it was constructed without blueprints and just hoped to work. The first car ever sent was said to not come back to the station. John C. Allen went out, fixed it, and they never had issues again. The idea for the new wooden roller coaster was seen as a risky one, with interest in them at an all-time low. Lark and his team wanted to make sure they built the longest and fastest attraction possible in such a small space. Construction began on the over 2,000 feet of track, and rather than just have a single coaster, during the build process, they would decide to use the vacant land next to it to add more attractions. Opening a full amusement park, on June 1st, 1963, called Miracle Strip Amusement Park. A birthday is always a cause for celebration, and in the case of the Miracle Strip Amusement Park, it's a time to look back at the park's beginning 25 years ago this weekend. The park has seen much change in those years. Started out with a uh, just the roller coaster, and uh, added on slowly but surely each year until we now have 26, over 26 rides and attractions. The highlight, of course, will be the Starliner roller coaster. With an out and back design, it was a huge addition to the area. Claiming to be the fastest roller coaster in the world, Starliner was a huge success and proved all those who doubted it wrong. The coaster was fully manually operated with riders sitting in three bench PTC cars. After the brake was released in the station, the trains climbed the 70 foot lift hill and went down the 65 foot drop. There will be eight hills throughout the layout spanning the whole amusement park. In the 1970s, the third hill will be enclosed heading into a dragon's mouth. 
and inside was a hidden bunny hop in the dark that took many riders by surprise. The ride was full of airtime and just a fun wooden roller coaster, especially in the 60s. For 50 cents, riders could ride the classic wooden coaster. For 25 cents, they could ride a second time. As the first permanent roller coaster in Florida, it brought new excitement to Panama City Beach. Miracle Strip Amusement Park was instantly successful and continued to grow, paying off their debts as they went. It would become one of the most popular tourist attractions in Florida. Even over the decades, it would continue to be the Starliner that was the main draw. 1978 saw the attraction enter the Guinness Book of Records, when Jim Barnett rode the attraction for a week. He then beat that by riding it for 15 days in 1980. The Starliner was a staple of Panama Beach for over four decades. Opening with the amusement park, it would also close with it. 2004 would be the landmark park's last ever season. After 41 years of entertaining millions of people, it was announced that September 5th will be the last day of operation for the classic park to make way for high-rise condos. They were trying to make the area more upscale. The park's ride was sold all over the world to different locations. Plans for the Starliner, however, were unclear. Some reports stated it would stay and be integrated with the new development. Others reported it to be sold or to be scrapped. The park had been handed down from Jim Lark over the years to his sons. Billy Lark stated it was a tough decision to sell the park, but the shorter family vacation season had hurt the park and it was struggling. He also said the undisclosed price was too attractive to turn down. Land had become increasingly expensive and sought after in the four years before the park closed. The actual sale of the park was estimated at nearly $15 million. Declining attendance, legal and insurance costs, and the harsh weather causing high maintenance costs were the deciding factor in the sale, other than the money, of course. The response to the park sale was extremely negative, with many fans unsurprisingly upset that it was just being sold, leaving them disappointed. 15 of the 45 permanent workers were moved to Lark's other property, Shipwreck Island. Over 200 seasonal workers would now be out of the job, with the park being, for years, the biggest employer of teenagers in the town. It wasn't just the park that was being removed for condos. The whole area had lost over 2,600 hotel rooms that were replaced with nearly 9,600 condos. Panama City Beach were really trying to move away from its history as a tourist town and move to a year-round luxury location. Interest was high for purchasing Starliner, with four amusement park operators hoping to buy it for their parks. While the ride was now old and it had been passed in thrills in nearly every way, it still had its fans and the hope it would move was high. On a spring-like Thanksgiving day, it wasn't turkey that was on the minds of the 700 workers here. It was time. They know that in just a matter of hours, it will be opening day at the new Cypress Gardens Adventure Park. The Adventure Parks Group, owned by Kent Boucher, had recently purchased the closed first theme park in Florida, Cypress Gardens, in 2004. It reopened as Cypress Gardens Adventure Park in late 2004 with a whole host of new attractions. The opening was not smooth and was delayed after hurricanes had battered the area in 2004, costing millions of extra dollars in damage. Regardless, investment continued, and in March 2005, a venture parts group purchased Starliner with plans to move it to either Wild Adventures in Georgia or Cypress Gardens in Florida. Many still wanted the first major roller coaster ever built in the state to remain in it. It did. However, unknown to everyone, it was a decision that would lead to the classic wooden coaster's demise. Adventure Parks Group was struggling with the cost to repair the attractions from the hurricane, as well as the initial investment costs they had spent adding them to the park. By 2006, they filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The already purchased Starliner was installed during this time. Florida's newest coaster would be Florida's oldest coaster. The project was estimated to cost $5 million to restore, update, and reinstall the classic attraction. Sandwiched between the large outdoor concert area and the Okeechobee Rampage and Triple Hurricane, the ride slotted in nicely with a historic theme park. 
but the park's financial difficulties were worrying. Starliner opened again for the first time in August 2007, just a few months after Cypress Gardens was sold again, when the park owners were forced to auction the park as part of the bankruptcy proceedings. Land South Adventures purchased Cypress Gardens at auction for $16.9 million. The Polk County Investment Company now hoped to focus on the bright future of Cypress Gardens. The park struggled on for another year. In November 2008, it was announced the attractions would close and the park would be scaled back as something else. When it reopened, none of the animals, rides, or attractions would operate. They would try and focus on its water park and botanical gardens. The park had been struggling for years, and the theme park aspect of Cypress Gardens would be no more. The rides and attractions were too expensive to operate. The Starliner had been rebuilt for $5 million, only to operate for one year. Cypress Gardens did reopen in March 2009. Standing, but not operating within the park, was all the remaining roller coasters that they couldn't sell, including Starliner. The future of Cypress Gardens looked bleak. With the ride sitting abandoned in the park, on September 23, 2009, owner Land South Holdings announced that the park was closing immediately, stating all avenues to keep the park open had been explored and they were unable to find a way to keep it running. Ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly of all children, it's my really great pleasure to be here today um, to confirm our acquisition of Cypress Gardens first of all, but more importantly to talk about our important plans for it. And I think right at the start what I want to do is um, get the suspense out of the way and reveal Florida's worst kept secret, and that is the arrival and the introduction to Florida of Legoland Florida. Surprisingly, the historic park would be saved, and many of its iconic elements kept. In January 2010, Merlin Entertainment purchased Cypress Gardens with the attempt to use the site as the fifth Legoland. Just a year later, Cypress Gardens would reopen as Legoland Florida. Many of the elements which made up Cypress Gardens were saved, and those coasters which sat closed for three years would reopen. The Triple Hurricane became Coastosaurus. Okeechobee Rampage was transformed into the Dragon. Swamp Thing became Flying School. The Beautiful Gardens were restored, and the essence of the park were combined with the Lego theme to bring life back to a park that had not seen it for years. Without Legoland, many of what made the park so special would have been lost. Not everything would be kept and reborn for the new theme park. Fiesta Express was removed and sold. Same for Galaxy Spin, which moved to Fun Spot America and still operates today. As for Starliner, Legoland did not see the old coaster as part of the plans for the park, which already had a much more kid-friendly wooden coaster. And in late July 2010, it was slowly removed piece by piece from the park and laid out in the parking lot. Sadly, back in Panama Beach, the original park was still sitting abandoned after its closure, making its closure even sadder. A couple, Teddy and Jenny Meeks, had wanted to put a carousel into Pier Park, the shopping and entertainment area not far from where the original Miracle Strip was located. They found the original carousel that had been in storage since 2004 and installed it. They created the Miracle Strip at Pier Park. They found an exact copy of the old Ferris wheel from the original park and purchased the two remaining attractions that hadn't been sold when it closed and brought them to a new area. They successfully brought back multiple smaller attractions from the original park to bring the fun back to Panama Beach. It was a start, but they had many, many requests to try and bring back the classic Starliner. After Legoland purchased Cypress Gardens, Joe Cadmus, president of Rideworks, had been working with Cypress Gardens for years and negotiated a price with Legoland to disassemble and move the attraction. Legoland gave the company very little time to do so, as they were rushing to get the new park ready, so much of the track and horizontal supports were unable to be saved and were cut during removal. The vertical bents were preserved and would be able to potentially be used to rebuild Starliner. They were stacked outside Joe Cadmus's home and the mechanical parts and trains were stored in a warehouse. 
In September 2010, Teddy and Jenny Meeks had formed Starliner PCB to try and purchase the coaster, wanting to bring it back to its original home. Their small retro amusements were successful, but they were short on space. They would move to a location nearby, opening a brand new full park in early 2014. It would include more than 20 rides, but the biggest news was that it was planned to include the return of Starliner. To celebrate the new park, one of the original cars from the coaster was refurbished and put on display at the groundbreaking ceremony for the new Miracle Strip. Um, I got a phone call late, uh, and they needed me to go and put this carousel up, and so I went to go put it up and uh, met the Meeks. Uh, I really kind of just hit it off with them. Um, um, I consider them very good friends and, um, and, and, and enjoy all the business that we've done together so far. I'm really ecstatic about everything we're fixing to do. There are many conflicting reports of what would come. They stated it would cost $3 million to reconstruct the original coaster, but they did have the parts to do it. Meek said that the ride was purchased and that the coaster was currently in storage outside of Tampa. When reconstructed, it would still maintain its original wooden structure, but have updated safety features and a new magnetic braking system. What they didn't say was that it needed a whole new track. To help fund it, they would sell bricks with visitors' name on, which would be placed on a walkway leading up to the new home of the classic coaster. They even entered the run-in for a $250,000 grant from Pepsi to help restore the Starliner. They didn't win. The new park opened in 2014, with the Starliner expected to make its grand return the following year. The park released a video showing the new Starliner. They would have to create the majority of the ride from scratch. Great Coasters International will create Starliner 2.0. If any of the original parts were to be used was unknown, but it didn't matter anyway. Within just a year, the new park announced it was closing. It wasn't the success that they hoped, and it was reported that the park owners were trying to sell the park. Shortly after, it was reported the Meeks had been evicted for over a year's worth of rent. The move to the new location was sadly not as successful. The dream of bringing Starliner back to Panama Beach would never become a reality. Both Miracle Strip parks would now sit abandoned. The condos that were once planned for the original park never became a reality. For 40 years, Miracle Strip Amusement Park entertained thousands of visitors and locals alike on Panama City Beach. Eight years ago, the park was torn down to make way for condominiums that were never built. Since then, there's been nothing on the property but a pile of rubble. Today, that began to change. Conyers and Grading Landscaping out of Dawson, Georgia began the process of recycling the con concrete, grinding it into dust. Two men from Birmingham, Alabama now own the property and are actively looking for buyers. Buddy Wilkes, general manager of Shipwreck Island Water Park, says clearing the strip is the first step towards something new, helping prepare the lot for the next phase of development. He adds the emotional phase ended long ago for most people and many are ready to move forward. The newer parts rides were put up for auction. One of those rides was listed as Coaster Starliner, 1963, Philadelphia Toboggan Company. It seems they did buy the parts, but sadly, the Starliner coaster would never be seen again. Whether it still exists somewhere in storage is unknown. However, in Plainsview, Texas, the In Progress National Roller Coaster Museum works to preserve the history of iconic attractions with a museum and it will be home to at least part of the original train of Starliner in its three-story tall wooden roller coaster display. At least somewhere part of the first ever roller coaster in Florida will be able to be seen when it opens in the future. The Starliner wasn't the best, biggest, or most exciting wooden coaster to exist, but it was a classic for those who visited Panama Beach over the 41 years of its operation, creating many, many happy memories. It is a great early example of John Allen's work before he began building bigger and better coasters. Sadly, it didn't fit with the goals of the Legoland Park, but really it was the purchase by Cypress Gardens that originally brought such hope for the coaster that cemented its demise. Perhaps if it had gone to Wild Adventures rather than Cypress Gardens, it may still be in operation today. Sadly, fate chose a different path for this once iconic roller coaster. Starliner was the first real roller coaster in Florida, a ride on John C. Allen's path to start the second golden age of coasters, and a ride that delighted many, many people in its years of operation.
A roller coaster that ended as just another that was given hope of being reborn multiple times, yet's demise was entwined with the failures of struggling parks and lost history. Um, I actually purchased the Starliner um, about four years ago um, and dismantled it with the hopes of bringing it back to Panama City. Um, it, um, it's been a, a goal and a task that um, I've, I've been working on for years. Teddy's helped and, um, and it's always, you know, just kind of been stalled out. Um, until last fall, he was talking about uh, the possibility of wanting to build a new park and, uh, and there might be the possibility we could actually bring the Starliner back. And so um, it's been uh, really exciting for me to know that, uh, especially when it all was final, that uh, the, the Starliner is finally coming home. So um, I'm really excited about bringing that back to life, and 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 it, you know, thrilling, you know, guests once again. You know, I mean, um, um, you know, it's a great old piece, and, and and it's Florida's first roller coaster. You know, it's uh, this is home to me, and I I I, I, I you know I want to bring it back. I, it's uh, it, it, it needs to be running again and so to be able to preserve that piece of our history and and, and to uh, restore it um, so that you know people can be riding in it you know for another 50 60 years I mean that's that's important to me Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Extinct. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes. And a special thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.